The next thing that we want to do is start looking at supply and demand, which are two completely different sides of any market. And the players in both of those sides, the consumers who make up the demand side and the businesses who make up the supply side, have completely different motives, which is why the graphs are going to be opposite from one another. Now, with demand, you can represent that as a graph or as a table. The graph is just a representation of the table. The information can be exactly the same. So let's say, for example, that we start with a random consumer. We'll call him Fred. Fred's good. All right. So Fred, our random consumer. Fred likes to buy paperback books. So what we want to look at, if we're talking about this as a table, is price and the quantity that Fred will demand at each price. How many would he be willing and able to purchase at particular price levels? So let's say, for example, that the price of a paperback book, maybe it's you know a nice quality trade with color pictures in it, is $18. Maybe we'll look at some different grades of quality here. $18, $12, $6, there we go, nice and increments. And zero. Zero. There is a point to the zero. All right. At 18 bucks. Fred might go, you know what, $18 paperbacks, that's kind of pricey. Maybe he's only going to buy two books per month. At $12, maybe he'll say, you know, that's, that's better. That's a lot better. Uh, maybe he thinks he can read them a little faster. Maybe he'll go with three. And at six bucks, he's starting to get pretty happy. He's like, woohoo, you know what? That sounds like a great deal. I'll get four. And if they're giving the books away free, does he still have a limit? Well, he might still have a limit. Maybe he lives in a small apartment. And if he got a whole pile of books, he wouldn't have any place to put them. And he'd end up giving them to the library or something or using them to line the bottom of his birdcage. So maybe if the books are free, the most he could possibly justify walking away with is twenty. Maybe. Maybe twenty. Now, the numbers for Fred are random. Probably won't be the same for anybody else, or maybe not exactly the same. Let's put this on a graph. Now, for supply and demand, you want to make sure that you have price on your vertical axis and quantity horizontal. Now, if you're very mathematically inclined, that will drive you absolutely crazy. Because if you know anything about mathematics, you know that your independent variable is supposed to go down here. But it's backwards in economics. And I've asked professors before why it's backwards, and all they can say is that's just how we draw it. So price is your independent variable. The quantity depends on the price. You can't work this the other way around, or your analysis will get very, very confused. Wrong. Wrong is another good word for that. So price is independent, and the price determines the quantity. So, let's put some numbers on here. And let's go up in increments. Okay. And if we go with quantity along the bottom, you don't have to have the same scale as long as it's consistent. So let's start with one. And then 
20 is going to be, you know, way out here somewhere. Etc. Etc. All right. So if the price was zero, he'd want 20. If the price is six, he would want four. So we have a point at six and four. If the price is 12, he's only going to want three. So we have a point at 12 and three. And if the price is 18, he's going to buy two. So we have a point at 18, should be up here, and two. So let's name these A, B, C, D. And D is somewhere out here. Now, if we connect these points, because the zero is like way out here somewhere, we get kind of a weird looking demand curve for Fred. Now, what is represented on this curve is Fred's preferences for something that he buys, in this case, paperback books. The quantity demanded represents his ability to purchase, his willingness and ability to purchase. If you're not willing and able to buy something, you don't demand it. You might be willing to buy a private jet. If you don't have the money, you're not part of that market. You might be willing to buy a lot of things if they were free. You're not part of that market. That oh, yeah. Occurs. I'd be willing to buy all kinds of stuff. Well, that's because it's human nature to want bigger, better, more. But if you're not willing and able, you don't count. I'd settle for more. Well, there you go. Bigger's overrated. Thank you for playing. All right. So what we see with a demand curve is a downward slope. Because at higher prices, people tend to want less. At lower prices, they want more. So what you see is a curve with a slope that trends downward. Or it is 